Hello everyone and welcome to another Simple Science video. And in the third part of the Vertical Circle of Motion series, we will be looking at a bead moving on a wire. A bead undergoing vertical, vertical circle of motion on a wire. So, for our previous two videos, we've been looking at a model whereby a body is undergoing circular motion around about a center point with a string attached to it and to the center point. So, in this video, we will be looking at a different model, quite similar, but it's different in the forces that are acting on it. Okay, so it's basically a bead, a bead you imagine, the bead that you, you wrap around your, your, your bracelets, and that's moving around this, this, this wire, whether it be metal or whatever, it's moving around a circular wire. And as you can see, this bead, the, the point in which it contacts the, the circular wire is quite undefined in this position where you see that um, there may be many positions where there is contact to the force. So therefore, we can, we can assume that this bead has only uh, one position of contact to the, uh, to the wire. So I make this bead thinner. I make, it, I make it into a ring. A ring where there's basically a simpler way you can look at where there's only one, one, um, one point of application of the force between the two objects. There you go. That's our assumed model of the bead moving around a circle. So when you look at this free body diagram, you can see that there are two forces that are acting on the bead. One is the weight force, which is due to the earth, and the other would be the normal contact force of the wire acting on the bead. Now, if we look at the basic positions of this bead moving in circular motion about this circular wire, we can see and represent the forces that are acting on the bead. But note that when it's at the top position or basically any top position, so anything above half of the half of the circular wire, we um, the, the, the normal contact force may be acting upwards or downwards. All right, so when we come later to our problems, when you're solving problems, it's very important that when you're trying to solve for n to assume that it's acting upwards as positive, as a basically a very simple reference and assumption so that uh, I will explain this later. So if we were to look closer to the basic positions of a bead moving about a wire, you can see just like in our previous video, the forces that are acting on our bead in its respective directions. So, in order to find the centripetal force, we need to, oh, first of all, we need to find the centripetal force because it's like the middle ground. It's the way we can link total mechanical energy, or kinetic energy, and gravitational potential energy to other forces that are acting on the wire. So, most commonly, it's used uh, this whole idea that the centripetal force is so important is in order to find the tension or the normal contact force in this situation uh, when it's acting in vertical circular motion. So you simply have to resolve radially or perpendicular to the direction of motion because it's a circle when you're, um, when you're considering perpendicular to the direction of the motion you're considering a direction towards the center of the circle. So the key is resolve forces in directions towards the center of the circle. So if we were looking at the first diagram it the some of the forces acting towards some of the components rather acting towards the center of the circle is just n it's just a normal contact force acting on the bead All right because mg has no component towards the center of the circle now we'll look at the second position in this position we can see that the sum of the forces acting towards the center of the circle would be the weight minus n because centripetal force will be acting downwards and in the converse position we're looking at Fc is equal to n minus mg because n is acting towards the center of the circle and mg is acting the other way. And when we're considering an angle, we need to resolve radially. So what we need to do is find the radial component of the weight towards the center of the circle. So it will be mg cos theta. And since n is acting towards the center of the circle and mg cos theta is acting away from the circle, we take n we minus mg cos theta in order to find some of the forces or the centripetal force of the bead at that particular position. Now if we're looking at our simple model, just like any other uh, horizontal or vertical circular motion examples, 
we will be dealing with the conservation of energy given that our 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 wire the the interface between our wire and and the bead is smooth so there's no resistive forces all right so because there's a conservation of energy the total mechanical energy will be constant throughout or the sum of the kinetic energy and the potential energy will be constant throughout so it will be equal to in this position where we assume that the bottom position is zero ground so it would be where h is equal to zero or the height is equal to zero so therefore there's no gpe so it would be the total mechanical energy at any position is equal to half m u squared where u is the initial velocity so th yeah that's where i explained position one would be the bottom position whereby there's no gra gravitational potential energy and ke would be uh, be equal to half m u squared we're looking at the middle position then the gravitation there is going to be gravitational potential energy relative to the bottom position because you know it's higher so the gravitational potential energy would be equal to um, mgh where h in this position in this example sorry will be r which is the radius of the circle because its height is one radius above the bottom position and since the total mechanical energy is half mu squared the KE, which is the difference between the total mechanical energy and the gravitational potential energy, because energy is conserved, would be half mu squared minus mgr. All right. Now, if we look at the top position, we can see that the gravitational potential energy is twice as much as the uh, position two. So, because it's twice as high, so it would be gravitational potential energy equal to mgh, where h is two r, so it's two mgr, and the kinetic energy the total kinetic energy will be equal to the initial kinetic energy minus the gravitational potential energy. So it would be half mu squared minus 2mgr. All right, so just like the previous example, but 2mgr. Now if we're looking at a position where there is an angle, then the gravitational potential energy would um, be quite m a little bit more difficult to solve, where it's mgh, but r, r in this situation, is not uh, basically the height is not r the height is r minus r cos theta all right so the gravitational potential energy therefore will be equal to mg and then to the bracket r minus r cos theta now if we're looking at the kinetic energy it will be much it's much like the previous examples the total mechanical energy minus the gravitational potential energy energy is conserved so it's half mg squared minus 2mg to brackets of r minus r cos theta Okay, now let's look at our first example. That is, a common question is to find the normal contact force at position at that position where there is an angle, where an angle is sixty, and the mass of the object or the mass of the bead would be one kilogram. And then its initial velocity is fifteen meters per second, and it's moving around a circle with a radius r of five. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to uh, consider the conservation of energy conservation of energy so in order for us to find V from V we can find the centripetal force and from the centripetal force we can find we can resolve radially to find N so the thing is we need to find V first so we need to find the velocity at position 4 now we do this through finding the kinetic energy of the object at position 4 so if we look at our previous equation that we have derived, that is the initial TME, that is the total mechanical energy at the start, which is half mu squared minus mg by h, which is in this position, h of the bead relative to position zero is r minus r cos theta. So Ke, when we do solve it, will be equal to 87.5 joules. Now, we can plug it into half mv squared, where v would be the speed at position 4, and it would be 13.23 meters per second. Now, by carrying on, we have our speed as calculated in the previous step as 13.2 meters per second. Now, we know that the centripetal force acting on any object at any position is equal to mv squared over r, where v is the, the tangential velocity which is 13.2 in our situation. So we plug in the values and we get centripetal force is equal to 35. 
And looking at the diagram, when we're resolving radially as I said previously, centripetal force is equal to n minus mg cos theta. So if we were to arrange this to find n and plug in the values, we would get n is equal to 40. So do take your time and, and uh, try the calculations by yourself and just to, just to check, check with this to make sure you understand it. Now in the second example, we were to find we were going to find the normal contact force at the top position. Now this is very important because as I said before, in the upper half of the circular wire, we are unsure. We are unsure initially of whether uh, the normal contact force will be acting upwards or downwards, or in other words, it's, uh, it has a vertical. It has a component uh, of the normal contact force upwards or downwards. So it's very important that we firstly assume that n is acting upwards. It makes everything a lot easier uh, because um, mg or the weight is always acting downwards. So we so we want to make sure we have something relative to that, which is the opposite way. So. Same thing, the first thing we need to do is find the velocity at the top position. In this, in this case, it's the total mechanical energy, or half mu squared, minus the gravitational potential energy at that point is mg to r. Plug in the values, you get a Ke, or a kinetic energy of 12.5 joules. Now this equates to a velocity of 5 meters per second. And the centripetal force at any position of the circle is equal to mv squared over r. Plug in the values, you can find the centripetal force, which is 5 newtons. And looking at the diagram, we can see that the centripetal force, which is the resultant force acting towards the center of the circle, is equal to n, mg minus n. Rearrange to find n, we have mg minus the centripetal force. Now, since we know mg, that is 1 kilogram times by g, which is we assume to be 10, 10 uh, 10 newtons per kilogram. And then Fc, we calculate it to be 5. So therefore, 10 minus 5 newtons, we get 5 newtons of normal contact force. Now the important thing is when we look at this 5 newton force, we can see that it has a positive value. So therefore, our assumed direction is correct. So basically, the force n is actually acting upwards. It could, it could be acting downwards if we had different values in our calculation. But in this situation, n comes out as, an, as a positive value, which means that our assumed direction is correct. So therefore, n is equal to 5, and it's acting upwards. So to summarize, we want to always consider the conservation of total mechanical energy, or the kinetic energy and the gravitational energy. Their sum is constant throughout, throughout the, the, the motion. So just like any other vertical, or horizontal circular motion problem. Next thing is that we want to find the centripetal force as usual, right? That is the most important thing to find the centripetal force, to find the link between energy and the forces acting on the object. And the last thing is to always assume that N, which is the force that we are unsure whether it's acting upwards or downwards, is to always assume that it's initially, uh, to always initially assume that it's acting upwards. And if you do find a value for n that is negative, that basically means that it is n is going to be in a position uh, in a direction that is opposite to the direction that you've initially assumed. All right. So thank you very much for watching my videos. I suggest that you do watch the previous videos on the vertical circular motion series just to keep up keep up on track with your mechanics revision and uh, revise hard and do well in your exam, guys. See you around.